Okay, in this video, uh, this is Dr. Lemon again. We are going to look at <clears throat> actually testing the uh, values of our uh, parameters uh, using um, some Excel features. So in this one, we're going to be looking at Chapter 4, page 140, the web file uh, Butler with delivery. So this is again about the, uh, the truck company again. But now we've got more than one variable to correlate. So we're going to have one independent variable um, or so, sorry, excuse me two independent variables and one dependent variable so it's like we have two x values and one y value and um, there's also uh, one more thing we need to do in case uh, you have not don't have what is called the um, if you have an older version of Excel like mine uh, the 2010 version then uh, we need to add some data analysis tools. So what you do is you go to File, drop down to Options, and then click Add-ins. And the one we want is we want this Analysis to Tool Pack. So you click that, and then hit Go. And the one we want is the Analysis Tool Pack. So you just hit OK, and that will be available for us to use now when we um, <clears throat> are trying to use some of our regression analysis. So um, if you click data, you'll notice on the far right that data analysis add-in I just uh, added appears on the far right side. So I think the 2013, the newest version, might have that already built in. But for older users, we need to add that in um, using the method I just showed. So um, what we want to do now is we want to hit um, the analysis, data analysis, and we want to go down to regression. So if you're up top, you may need to scroll down a little bit, hit regression, and then hit OK. And it's going to ask us to input a Y range and input an X range. So our Y range is our uh, dependent variable. And for us, that is going to be the time values. So if you remember the other Butler uh, example, we also had the same thing going on. So, oh, Well, maybe we should start from the bottom and move up. But we go way down here. Um, there's more than 300 values, I think. So uh, the last one is uh, D301, and the first one is just D1. So we can go all the way up there. D1. OK, and then we want to include uh, the values from our <coughs> our um, dependent variables too. So this is our x range. So our x range is going to be a little bit different because it's going to include uh, both the b and c columns. So let's again go down to the bottom um, and highlight from there. So we want the b and c columns and we want them all the way up. So that's our x range because we have like an x1 variable and an x2 variable. Okay, so now we've got that selected for our X range values. And then uh, the confidence level kind of depends what they ask on the uh, quiz online that I've provided for you. I, I specify a 99% confidence interval. I think this pre comes preset to 95, so normally you'll have to click it on. And then um, if it's 95, change it to 99. If it says 99 or, or whatever value is specified. And we want to have this come out in the new worksheet plot. And it'll just give the data there. So we hit OK. Oh, same number. So we had a small, oh, somehow a 2 got added to the end of this. And that was our issue. So if we delete that, we should be OK. Hit OK, and we get the summary output of our test values. And you'll notice that we have three p values here. So that is basically going to tell us the values for each one of the B or beta values. So uh, in this example, um, I'm just going to type over here what does a general uh, regression equation look like. Well, it's linear in multiple variables. We have two of them, so it'll be like a B0 plus uh, B1. Well, you know what? Just to make it clear, I'll, I'll probably write these a little differently. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the general equation looks like, which it does say in your book, but let's call the first thing B0 time, then it's going to be plus B1 
times x1 plus a uh, b2 times an x2. So that's what the general equation looks like um, of our regression uh, parameters. So these p-values, what they're going to do is they're going to tell you uh, the relationship between the variables and your data. And like any, uh, notice it's a t-stat, so really we're just doing a t-stat or a t-test between each of the variables. So remember, if it's less than 0 0.01, because our significance level is 0.99, then we that's going to be a very unlikely event, and we'll reject the null hypothesis and select the alternative hypothesis. So uh, we can see right here that 0.53 is going to be above. This is 3.54 times 10 to the negative 83rd, so really it's like there's 82 zeros and then the 3. Um, so it's a very, very small value, and the same thing for the deliveries parameter. So how would we interpret that in terms of uh, what has been going on? Well, um, so let's start with maybe the beta 2 value. Um, we're testing if the beta 2 value is 0. So since it's a very if we didn't reject the null hypothesis, we'd conclude that the mean value does not change of y does not change when the value of x2 changes. But when you look at the p-value, it's 2.848 times 10 to the negative 69th. So the p-value tells us that the value of b2 is actually going to be zero, since we'll reject that null hypothesis. So uh, that's how we select beta 2 by looking at this number down here. So to talk about beta 1 we're going to look at the p-value of this number here. Again, to test if it's 0, we're going to, um, that'll be the null hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis will be the other way. So, um, <clears throat> the p-value is, again, very, very small, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 83rd, and that p-value tells us that if the p-value is actually zero, the probability we could collect a random sample of 300 observations of Butler trucking and driving assignments that yields a t-statistic with an absolute value greater than 27.36 is practically zero. So such a small probability represents a highly unlikely scenario. Thus, the p-value allows us to conclude that there is a relationship between driving time and miles driven. Um, Thus, the p-value is significantly small to allow us to reject the hypothesis that there is no relationship between driving time and miles drive driven at the significance level that we selected, 0 0.01. Okay, and then the last one, um, b0 will correspond to this value. And um, what is that telling us? Well, we can test the hypothesis that b0 is... Zero, in a similar fashion, um, if we do not reject the hypothesis, we conclude that the mean value of y is zero and that the values of x1 and x2 are both zero. And there's no driving time when a driving assignment is zero miles and has zero deliveries. So what is the output here? Um, the associated p-value is that 0 0.5353 three number. So this p-value tells us um, that if the value of b0 is zero, the probability we'd collect a random sample of 300 observations um, has this uh, probability. Thus, we do not reject the hypothesis that the mean driving time is zero when a driving assignment is zero and has zero deliveries. <coughs> okay, so that is how we get the p-values associated to each of the b values or beta values, and we just use the normal uh, t-test uh, setup. So uh, for each one of them, we're going to say that the um, hypothesis that B0 is 0, hy alternate hypothesis that the uh, beta, beta value or B value is not 0, and then draw your conclusions based on whether your P value is larger or smaller than the significance level. So that is how we do re the regression analysis for um, uh, least squares data. Okay, I hope that helped. Please let me know if you have any questions.